this sacred space. It's a sacred space and we're here for the most sacred reason. We're here for liberation. Liberation is the realization of who you are. That's the unspoken transmission. That's the formless teaching of this school. It's really just being quiet. Being quiet long enough and listening deeply enough that you fall back into yourself so you can be yourself. That's the living possibility and it comes from the lineage of Ramana to Papaji to you. Whatever mysterious reason brought you here, it's deeper than the mind can understand. Something more fundamental brought us together. And so that is the essential. If that is all you're here for is this silent transmission of the truth of yourself and the realization of the truth of yourself by being quiet, just nothing to do, letting everything stop. You may have to sit quietly by yourself. You may just stay exactly as you are doing the activities you're doing. You trust yourself and you're quiet. And if it means you retreat from the world, you retreat from the world. If it means you stay in the world, you stay in the world. If it means you stop this but not that, there are no rules for silence. Just be quiet. And the quieter you are, the more deeply you listen. And the more deeply you hear. And when you hear this overwhelming, roaring silence that is the living presence of your own being, and you merge into yourself. You're absorbed into yourself. This is where true happiness is. It's where fulfillment is. It's where freedom and love. It's where you are in this moment. You don't have to change. You don't have to fix. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to do anything. You simply stop all of your going, all of your doing, all of your past, all of your future. And you just be quiet and listen. Don't listen to the talking in your head. It's not useful. Listen deeper. And eventually the talking in your head becomes trained when there's no one engaged in this dialogue, it winds down. And this incredible power of mind is then used to go in instead of to go back and forth. Instead of talking to yourself, you find what's undiscovered. Same mind, just different function. So this is all about function. What, it's about what works. Not about theories or beliefs or ideas or practices. Or just function. If it doesn't work, try something else. If it works, stay true. And so this silent transmission, if you stay true to yourself, you're staying true to your own heart. You're staying true to silence. And in that, everything will arise to test you. The world arises to pull you back. Quite naturally, that's the play. That's the Leela. And we pass some tests and we fail others. That's also natural. When you pass a test, there's a certain blissful elation that comes and the temptation of inflation back into a somebody who passed the test. If you fail the test, there's deflation and pain and the suffering of having failed the test. And that's the teacher. The one who's suffering, the one who failed, is the obscuration that needs to be examined and tell the truth about. The one who's still attached the one who's still a somebody doing something. So passing the test has benefits and rewards and also the setting up of the next test of inflation. Failing the test has benefits and rewards and setting up the next test 
to stay true to yourself. Wherever we fail, it gets repeated over and over and over again in other particular moments of your life. It seems like we're walking on a straight line, but we're not we're walking in a circle, a spire, a gyre, spiral, hopefully a spiral. Most people it's not a spiral, most people it's a donkey track, it just goes round and round and round. Different faces, different places, different things, but it's the same old donkey track. If you're an ant on the donkey track, it seems like you're walking in a straight line. It always seems like you're walking in a straight line as you walk around the donkey track. But somehow, events keep recurring. Crises, betrayals, losses keep showing up. Different faces, different places. And those are the tests that will reappear once you've realized the truth of yourself. If you don't realize the truth of yourself, you're just a donkey on the track trying to have a better course. And you can improve your course. You can make it a better ride. No doubt. And no problem. Except if you make it a better ride and settle for it, you've missed the essence. If you make it a better ride, why not? Be as happy and fulfilled as you can be. But don't use that to settle without the final bliss of the true realization. That's the formless teaching of this school. The teaching in form is also a sacred teaching. And it comes to us over thousands of years. It brings in all the different spiritual roots of Buddhism and Papaji's clear Hindu. And we can go back to, you know, the Hindus actually are Aryans. Aryans are Persian steppe nomads that invaded into North India and brought their cows and their cow worship and their fire worship. And so that's part of it. That's part of us. Part of this teaching. And it goes back to ancient Greece. Another amazing thing I've just found in the last few days is that the word enchantment seems to have Pythagorean roots in that Pythagoras, this brilliant philosopher that informed Plato and Aristotle and everybody that came after and is still alive in the secret teachings of the mystery schools of the different religions in the East. Pythagoras saw that everything in the universe had a number and was vibrating and that it's all mathematics. And if you knew the mathematical patterns, you'd understand how things work. And he saw that this vibration, each one of us was vibrating and we needed to be tuned. He saw it in terms of hot and cold, dry and wet, the different humors that were then known. And how do you tune it? They would tune it through enchantment. Enchantment is the chant of the tone that you resonate with, that puts you into an altered state. And so together we're going to discover the secret teachings of enchantment. We're going to learn how to sing each other's song. To learn how to enter the vibrational field of another and harmonize with it. And in the harmonizing with it, it becomes in tune with you. Just like we see, you know, clocks on a wall that will just automatically eventually they're all going in the same direction because they go into tune with each other. So we're going to learn how to tune ourselves and how to then receive the tuning of others. And you know, we've all know this, you know, we all feel when someone is giving off bad vibes. We all feel if someone's giving off good vibes. What's vibes? Vibe is vibrations. Vibration is a t particular sound. Every vibration has its own sound. And if you can hear it, it's called hearing the mystery music of the spheres. If you could hear the planets vibrating, if you could hear the celestial harmony, then what we do is we can hear each other. 
We can hear the cosmos that's in front of you by starting with the cosmos inside. And when you become fully attuned to yourself, you realize the unchanging silence that's the core before all movement and vibration. Then you're in tune with yourself. And this attunement to yourself, when it happens originally, the outside could still be discordant. It will eventually come into tune the quieter you are. And it takes as long as it takes. Bless you. And eventually, the inside and the outside are congruent. And when inside and outside are congruent, you're in service. You're happy, you're fulfilled, and you're in service of love. And that's what we're here for. It's the sacred mystery school teaching of love. So once you have the formless, then you have the form, and the form is called skillful means. Skillful means is the ability to move through the trance of the world without being entranced and without being distracted, and without being withdrawn, and then you're fully embodied in service, fully embodied in yourself as yourself. Which, since you are love, you naturally love to serve. Service doesn't have a particular face, doesn't mean you go do something in particular. Doesn't mean you change anything at all. You can wear your turban or not, it doesn't matter. You can wear whatever clothes you like, it doesn't matter. You should be in service. Although my teacher Papaji said to me, you know, he said, you know, if you shave your head and call yourself Swami, you have a much bigger following. You'll be more successful. But I said, but if you did that, then people will think you're different. They'll think, oh, he's a Swami. That's why. He said, dress like them. Be like them. No difference. That's our mission. That's the mission of this school. Not to shave your head or do anything special to be as you are, as you are, in the world as it appears. So that those who meet you come in tune with you. Not because you're in singing at them, but just by being yourself, they will come in natural tune with you. If you miss the silent transmission and only get the form transmission, you will come away with the secrets of the universe. You'll come away with enchantment. You'll come away with the possibility to have a much better life. If you miss everything else and you don't realize yourself, you will still be served. So it's not like there's something to attain. There's nothing to get. There's nothing to grasp. There's nothing to search for. There's nothing to look outside yourself for. And there's no judgment, and no comparison. You can't tell what's happening with someone else. You can only tell what's happening with yourself. So you stay true to yourself. On whatever level it is, you tell the truth. We start out off telling the truth very superficially, but we start to notice where we're not telling the truth, where we're lying, where we lie to our partner, we lie to our kids, we lie to our, wherever it is, wherever you're showing up, there's a lie going on. Quite because that's how animals work. We're all camouflaged to different degrees, and camouflage is a lie. We all take on certain masks. The mask is a lie. It's useful, functional, but it's not the truth of yourself. And if you know that, no problem with the mask. If you don't know that, it's a lie. So that's where we tell the truth. And in telling the truth, you disengage from the lie. Then the mask continues or not. It's not your business. It's not a problem. Either way, disappears, no problem. Stays, no problem. But it's not who you are, and you know it, so you're not lying. You're just playing your role, whatever the role is. Mother, daughter, child, artist, president, whatever, street sweeper, doesn't matter. That's your role. If you don't take it personally, you can be happy. And you don't have to stay in it, because you have freedom to say, no, I don't want to do that anymore. It doesn't, it's not right. Or freedom to say, yes, this is, really, this is really a good fit. It works for me. If 
for you to be who you are as you are. So this is structured as a school. You're going to be doing certain exercises. You're going to be discuss, discovering different things about yourself and each other. You're going to be discovering uh, skillful means. But don't be afraid of it. Don't fight with it. Don't reject it. Don't accept it. Don't believe it. Just have an open mind. Discover for yourself. If you try to do it mentally, it's not going to work. That's the first teaching. You can't figure this out. And it's not about understanding it. Wisdom is deeper than understanding. Wisdom leads to true knowledge, which is the source of understanding. If you go for understanding on a superficial informational level, you can understand a lot. Computers have enormous capacity to understand what's happening in patterns and we can't begin to discover. They're much smarter than we are for that level. But luckily, we don't have to be on that level. Everything here will be provided in a way that you don't have to think about it. You can just participate. You can just show up. And you can always ask for feedback. And you can always ask for help. You can always ask questions. You can always, doesn't matter what you understand. If you don't understand, ask. And you need to understand, find out. There are no rules here. And when there are no rules, people are afraid of no rules. What might happen if there are no rules? Chaos and immorality and destruction. It seems like we're re returning to the primordial chaos of entropy when there's no rules. But it's not like that. If there's no rules, there's a deeper harmony. And his harmony is so sweet and so attuned, it doesn't need to follow a particular rule. It expresses itself as art, as poetry, as music, dance. It expresses itself as you. And you don't need a rule. Because you are love, you're naturally avoiding violence. It's distasteful, it's unpleasant. You're naturally avoiding hurting someone doesn't feel good to anybody. So what good luck? You know? I was a failure in my life. I didn't become a college history professor. I mean, I didn't fulfill my parents' dreams. I didn't do what I was slated to do, what I had the potential to do in the world. I was a failure on that level. That's the good luck. The great good luck of failure. And so then we can forgive ourselves for our failures. It's all useful. It brought you to this moment. So then you look back on your life and you start to see the failures that you still hold, that you're blaming someone for, either yourself or someone else did it to you, you're victimized. Should have been different. The man you lost, the job you lost, the whatever it is, that you, the wrong choices that you made. Then you see the, the forgiveness in the realization that it brought you here. It brought you to the potential to hear the secrets of the universe, to realize the truth of yourself, to wake up from the enchantment that you're in and then to serve others who are already enchanted. <laughs>